Up next, Caleb in Columbus, Ohio, one of my top 10 favorite Ohio cities listening on St. Gabriel Radio. Uh, Caleb, uh, your question for Carlo. Hi, this is Caleb. I am going to make it short, and then I am going to hang up and listen online Okay. on St. Gabriel. Um, my question is for my – I converted recently, and – a lot of my Protestant relatives have no idea about purgatory, and I was just wondering if you could give me the elevator speech that I could give to them, because they obviously have less books in the Bible, so they're not even familiar with the concept. They think right. it's a Catholic invention. So yeah. that's my question. Okay. And so here we um, go. I'm going to hang up. <laughs> All right, Caleb. Thank you for your question, brother, and thanks for giving us a call here at Catholic Answers Live. So here's, here's a concise argument that you could employ, all right? Premise one, if it's possible to die with the guilt of sin on your soul, but yet still be in friendship with Christ, well then purgatory would be necessary for heaven. The, premise two, the Bible teaches that it's possible to die with the guilt of sin on your soul, but yet still be in friendship with Christ. Conclusion, therefore, purgatory is necessary for heaven. And so, the, the, concerning premise one, the biblical, in, in order to make good on that premise, to make good on that claim, that it's possible to die with the guilt of sin on your soul, if it's possible to die with the guilt of sin on your soul, but yet still be in friendship with Christ, well, then purgatory would be necessary. We look to Revelation twenty one twenty seven for example, where the Bible says, nothing unclean shall enter into heaven. Now, within this literal historical context, it's talking about ritual uncleanness, but we could extend that to moral uncleanness as well. If you commit a sin that is not unto death, to use the language of St. John in 1 John chapter 5, verses 16 through 17, a sin that does not destroy the God's life in the soul, hence not unto death, we call that a venial sin, well, you would be guilty of sin. There would be some sort of defilement on your soul. But according to the Bible, that's not going to be able to enter into the kingdom of heaven because heaven's nothing but purity, right? We can't have any defilement in heaven. So that substantiates premise one. That argues for premise one. Premise two says the Bible teaches that it is possible to die with the guilt of sin on your soul, but yet still be in friendship with Christ. And the key text to support that premise is, as I just mentioned, 1 John chapter 5, verses 16 through 17, where St. John clearly articulates a distinction between a sin not unto death and a sin unto death. And he's not talking about physical death here. He's talking about spiritual death. So some sins will lead to spiritual death. We call that mortal sin. It's going to have a mortal effect on the soul. God's life is no longer going to exist in the soul. Those sins that do not lead to spiritual death, we call that venial sin. Well, what does that mean? That means that you still have God's life in your soul. You're still a friend of God. But yet, you've committed some offense against God and therefore are defiled. You know, Jesus even implies this in uh, Matthew. Uh, the, the, the specific verse is, is slipping my mind right now. Let's see if I can get it. Matthew 5.19. Jesus says, listen to this. Whoever then relaxes one of the least of these commandments and teaches men so shall be called least in the kingdom of heaven. Notice, relaxes one of the least of the commandments, but yet still in the kingdom. So yeah. sin, but yet still in the kingdom. So it's not a sin that merits separation from the kingdom or separation from Christ. Right. It's a sin that defiles the soul, but yet the soul is still in the kingdom, therefore still a friend of God. So if, and so there we have biblical evidence that it's possible for somebody to be guilty of sin, but yet still be a friend of Jesus. And so if that person dies with that guilt of sin, well, then that guilt of sin is going to have to be purified before that soul enters into the glory of heaven. And that, that purification, that final purification of the elect who die without that perfect holiness that's necessary for heaven will undergo that final, that's what we call purgatory. So there's a succinct argument for our friend there, uh, Caleb. Caleb. 